business such as mobster work or something like that. They're going to be regular working people doing the various jobs that we all need to work and live in society. And Jesus needed to work and live in society right before he started his ministry. So this question, what I concluded from this was that there is no way for man to know for sure what iniquity is. And there are, there's no sure thing that you can accuse somebody of or that you can say or that you can calculate to figure it out. But what I understand is that the successful heart who makes it into the kingdom of God is a courageous heart. It has courage and it's strong in that person and that for that courage and for a heart that is upright and sure God will lead the footsteps of that soul of that person away from these works of iniquity even while it is not revealed to them they may not know what what or why or how they have avoided the iniquity and the reason I think for that and this is the way I I word it the parameters of iniquity are hidden that the cowardly and the divided may continue therein thus their works may testify what manner of fruit they yield and what kind of heart that they have because if the iniquity was was clear and everybody knew exactly what it was then those whose hearts are not pure and and brave with with courage that are willing to fully choose the kingdom of God see I think the problem with most Christians is that they are divided they're divided between their desires in this world and the kingdom of God what's required and this is not new or you know anything in particular that stands out as far as being original most people know that you know because from the scripture it says let not that man think that he'll receive anything the man with a divided mind so we know that you need to be you need to put God first and you need to be undivided in your desire for the kingdom of God in order to enter therein because if you're still caring for and loving for something of this life you're not going to make it because it says he who seeks to save his life shall lose it and he who seeks to lose his life shall save it and you know there is nothing that you could speak against somebody to say well wait a minute you know I love my children which are in this world and I need my job which serves the people in my community including my family and my children how can you say that I am divided in my desire to enter the kingdom of God if you know, I'm not giving up my job, I'm not giving up my passion or whatever it is that I do in the world so that I can forsake everything and just follow God. I mean, what are you going to do with your life besides sit there and read the Bible, right? So there's no, what I realized about this was that there's nothing that you can say to anybody or nothing that you can know for sure and say these are the parameters of iniquity whereby you will not enter the kingdom of God. But the fact is that I see is that there is a default iniquity. There is a default evil business that we're doing, and it is disguised as everything. That's what I found. I mean, you could be the fireman, you could be the school teacher, you could be the shoe salesman. It doesn't matter. But the default ways, I think, especially in the end times, are iniquity. And just as a as a parametric thought about it, is that there are uh, businesses that you could do which on the outside let's say you're just doing the most honest labor you know some you know construction regular worker worker carpenter okay like Jesus building people's houses that we need to live in how can this be iniquity well here's one thought about it which is that in the end time the way Satan has set up the money and everything you have to for instance have a contractor's license and in order to have a contractor's license and pay for that license you have a recurring fee you can't just you know do some jobs and then you know rest a little bit I mean you are under pressure to continuously pay you are under pressure to jack up your prices you are under pressure to cut corners and it could be could be that in the end times 
what's happening is that these occupations that no one could point the finger at and say this is evil works because of the way it's constructed if you continue in them you will be found doing iniquity and you will not be able to enter the city uh, the medical profession comes to mind my mother was a doctor and finding out in the last part of her life discovering the whole truth about how they're lying about the vaccines and autism and everything that the whole setup of the medical industry is such that you cannot be in it you cannot be a doctor you cannot run a business as a doctor unless you prescribe to and you are beholden to the powers that be in the AMA which is a complete satanic evil organization that has set up the whole thing so that they live off of sickness they don't want you to be have the whole chemotherapy thing that's just to finish you off once they give you if they give you the cancer then they finish you off with the chemotherapy they don't want you to know about the cures that they've had for a long time including baking soda and a bunch of other stuff okay because the 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 whole thing is set up but but you see what i'm saying if you tried to practice as a doctor without doing what they prescribe for you to do in their big medical texts that the american medical association puts out you will be banned you will lose your license you will not be able to practice medicine if you try to practice medicine outside of this whole system they can throw the book at you you'll be persecuted you'll be thrown in jail you'll be you know you'll be shut down you can't just be they'll call you a quack it's even if your remedies work you can see that in in that movie cancer the forbidden cures that i have at my channel you should check it out if you haven't seen it i mean you know the there are people that have discovered the cure for cancer for instance and they got shut down by the american established medical association especially the ama and they even moved their operation over to mexico because that was the only place they could operate and then still people try to discredit it, say oh these people are quacks it doesn't work blah 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 you know but that's that's one example and they have these evil creatures i believe that and the reptilians are behind it the satan seed that are running our society have done this over such a long period of time and completely infused society and made it normalized and the accepted venues of payment and money and the whole system that it seems normal and anybody saying what i'm saying just looks like an illogical quack trying to you know disrupt and you know be a rebel or whatever and you know is just is not talking about the truth but people know people like my mother who was a very credible person i mean she had competence that way beyond mine she was good at taking tests i mean in order to be a doctor you have to stay up until one every night studying i mean it is tough and she's doing that you know all this time and and raising kids too is really amazing but in, in any case she finally realized that the system that we're living under is lying and it's you know, she thought it was about money but I realize it's not about money it's about power and corruption they are in league with these devils and demons they want people to continue on being doctors and and the people that are going to these doctors all living in iniquity which is the evil business you can't get the money to go see the doctor that won't cure you unless you are doing iniquity and there are other things that they do do that will save your life you know so that you know it's not completely you know they're going to kill you every time of course but overall what you'll find is they're not interested in your health they want you to kill yourself with unhealthy food they don't want to give you the real cure for cancer which they have they probably had it for a long time they know exactly what will cure you but they they suppress it Un unbelievable evil and that's another uh, hallmark of the christian that doesn't make it is the inability to see the unbelievable evil okay but there is one parameter that we're familiar with and of course rebels try to explain this away but there is one parameter and that is you cannot be rich and enter the kingdom of god it's very clear uh, in Matthew 19:23 it says a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we know that wealth does have something to do with it but that's an exterior parameter because then you go to well you know do you need to be poor or 
you know, what else is it? You know, because there are a lot of people that aren't rich. They're medium, middle income, but they're still doing iniquity, and we don't know what those things are, what defines it. As I said, I think it's it remains a mystery so that man cannot judge by his mind, but it's it's a matter of the heart, and so that you will see uh, what manner of fruit a person yields, whether or not they understand or not, because the the, the the heart of a man guides his path, but the Lord guides his footsteps. Therefore, how can man know his own way? That's in Proverbs and probably some in Psalms. But another thing is, do you need to be poor to enter the kingdom of God? Well, there is an argument, and if you look at Psalm 102.17, it says, he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. And destitute clearly means poor. Now, this is not ironclad, okay, at least from the way I see it. It's not ironclad that you need to be poor. But it says, he will regard the prayer of the destitute. Can you turn it around and say, he does not regard the prayer of those who aren't destitute? I don't know. I mean, as I said, I, I don't think that that's ironclad. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that I think right away that you have to be destitute, but it, it could mean that. And, and not despise their prayer, because the scripture also says, A humble and contrite heart, O Lord, thou shalt not despise. Um, and it says, and not despise their prayer. It, it could, that could be saying that he despises the prayer of those who are not poor. But, you know, I haven't always been poor, or at least sometimes, sometimes occasionally I haven't been, but now certainly I am. But, you know, like I said, you can't say for sure what it is. But one thing we can say is that a rich man, and I would say, you know, I mean, if you're making a million dollars a year, I, I would call that rich or even half a million I don't know but then again I couldn't I couldn't say but at least a million you know you're going to be considered rich I mean if you're driving a Mercedes and you live in a 34,000 square foot house I think that qualifies as being rich but it also says too the scripture says uh, the poor in spirit shall inherit the kingdom of God and that's a whole mystery in and of itself but we don't know. But there's just two parameters that we know concerning iniquity. But on the whole, I say that it's a mystery because man is not necessarily meant to understand. But I think that the Christian who will be successful and enter the kingdom of God will begin to have some idea in his mind. He'll begin to sense it. You sense it as you look at them. You sense it as you see what they're doing. You see it in their, in their actions. You know, even even Christian people, as they go about their their various works, you can see their iniquity. You can sense it, but there's no ironclad logic and absolute parameter that you can say. You see, you're doing iniquity. You're you're continuing in the evil business of the world that will bar you from entering into the kingdom of God.